Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Cabinet meeting on Tuesday, the 17th of November. Is there any apologies? Apologies from Ruth Harley. Thank you. And order of business? There is one additional item uh, report uh, in connection with the amendment to pupil administration policy uh, in relation to admission to early learning and childcare for three and four year olds. Um, the leader of the council has agreed to accept this report as a matter of urgency and should be taken as item 5A on the agenda. Thank you. Um, we just now move on to um, the public items and item number four, the minutes of the meeting of the 6th of October, um, pages 3 to 16. Um, are we agreed that they are a correct and accurate account? Thank you very much. And um, we can now go on to the additional item um, 5A. You want to do five first? Five, okay, five, sorry. Five, five first, five. Um, and it's creating and developing positive destination posts for adult and young people within Midlothian Council. And that's going to be given to us by Mary Smith. Oh, Grace, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this report um, outlines um, ways to increase employment opportunities within Midlothian Council for those who are unlikely to secure a positive destination. Section 2.2 outlines the aim, which is actually to introduce a model to create a level playing field for young people for posts within the Council and to increase the number of young people who progress to employment within the Council itself, especially those at risk of a negative destination, including those who are looked after and accommodated, and that's a group we really wanted to prioritise. <coughs> Section 2.5 outlines the recruitment model itself and the report concludes with, um, in Section 5, two recommendations. Firstly, to approve the promotion and implementation of a systematic approach to the conversion of existing <coughs> substantive posts to positive destination posts taking into account EQIA using divisional budgets. And secondly, to set targets for the creation of a fixed number of percentage of positive destination vacancies within the Council to be converted annually and tracked through quarterly performance reporting. Thank you, Bob. Uh, it's a very welcome report, this, and very happy to approve the recommendations. Uh, we've been doing very well in our uh, positive destination sense, so it's really w welcome to see this concentration on the more, perhaps the more difficult one, aspects of it. Right? So, very happy to move the recommendations. Thanks, Leader. I would echo what Bob has said. I think it's very encouraging to see that the Council is giving the lead here, and I found this a very clear and well-constructed paper and found it very encouraging. I would only want to highlight one point which I really did feel strongly as, as, as being excellent, and that is step four, pre-application and interview support. This is what many of these young people uh, require. It's often a confidence thing, but it's also a technique thing. And I think this being part of the process is excellent. So I would congratulate Rick Grace on an excellent report, and I look forward to the results of it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm all happy to go ahead now. Thank you very much. Uh, now we move on to the additional item, a 5A amendment to pupil administration policy, and that's going to be done by May Mary Smith. Thank you. Um, our apologies for a, a late paper today, but we felt it was really important. There's a difference between two um, policies or two um, bits of legislation. One is under the Education Act, when children should be admitted to nursery, and one is in, in terms of the 600 hours. So in order to close that anomaly, what we're proposing here with this paper is that, where possible, children will be admitted to nursery in the month after their, their third birthday. Um, so it's just closing that gap. Um, what happened in the past was if children had a, a, a January or February birthday, they wouldn't be admitted until the August because it missed the next session because it went by session dates rather than their birthday. So really this report is just closing that anomaly and we're, we're very clear, we're saying where possible. So it might not always be possible in a nursery for, for youngsters to get that place, but what we're trying to do is close the gap. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Lee. I'm very happy to uh, accept this late report. Uh, it's, it's going through the other end of the process, uh, right at the start. Uh, we've been the first one's dealt with the, virtually the end of education. Uh, going here we are right at the start, and this early intervention, this early start, is all very important. And 
And to make it more flexible, we can only welcome this. Uh, looking at some of the detail on, table, uh, on part three, the table, uh, <coughs> overall it's not the best interest of the learning to remit them to the nursery during December and June. No, I suppose that's good. Uh, the wee souls born in November don't get hauled in before Christmas, but yet to come in the new year and after the summer holidays. Yes, I'm very happy to uh, make a recommendation to accept this. Um, Kelly? Um, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate uh, Bob's point there as well and just pick up the point about um, because the admissions will be spread out throughout the year, it does take uh, a significant burden off uh, staff at pressure points as well. So it's really, really welcomed, uh, as is the extra uh, childcare places. I'm sure that will be uh, a good thing. Closing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, now we can move on to item um, six, Midlothian Council Tenant Satisfaction Survey. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. <coughs> Excuse me. This is uh, to report to Cabinet in terms of the Tenant Satisfaction Survey, which was carried out in 2014. This is part of the data requirements for the Scottish Housing Regulator in our annual return of the Charter. In terms of the methodology, all council tenants were sent uh, a survey form. There was also the opportunity to complete that online. And of the 6,662 surveys sent out, uh, 1,125 were returned, giving us a return rate of 17%, which is certainly up on last, uh, the last survey in 2012. We also uh, make use of the STAR format, which is surveys of tenants and residents, so that we're able to make a comparison across our peer group. Uh, and the range of responses are detailed in section 2.2, range from very dissatisfied through to very satisfied. In terms of the analysis that's in the appended survey, uh, which is detailed in full for members, uh, there's the outline of the households relative to the profile of respondents, their gender um, and the age range. In terms of the satisfaction with the home and neighbourhood, 85% indicated that they were satisfied, although we can note that there is some variation depending on the house type of respondents. For example, there was less satisfaction for those tenants in flatted properties rather than houses. Um, there was satisfaction in, at, at the range of 73% relative to the rent charge providing value for money, uh, compared to 9% who were dissatisfied at that. Uh, certainly with the recent rent consultation, I would think that that may have changed because we've been able to benchmark and provide tenants with that detailed information that um, we are uh, the sixth lowest rent charge uh, in Scotland. In terms of satisfaction with repairs and maintenance, uh, there was 79% of those who'd had a repair carried out in the last 12 months who were satisfied with that service. And access to services in terms of getting in touch with the council uh, and the means of doing that has been detailed so that that assists us in terms of improvement to the service uh, and respective channels for access to it for people to, to contact us. In terms of the opportunity for participating, 62% were uh, satisfied at the opportunities that were provided to them and again we would anticipate that that should have improved in the past year given the range of activities and the current consultations that are going on with the uh, housing allocation policy and the rent strategy which are uh, significant to, to all tenants and applicants. In terms of the overall satisfaction that's in paragraph 9 showing that 79% of respondents were satisfied and again we see a distinct difference between older tenants uh, and younger people in terms of their satisfaction and the household compositions. There's a comparative analysis in section 10 from uh, the 2009, the 2012 and subsequently the current 2014 survey in terms of the range of satisfaction which indicates that we uh, had a dip in 2012 uh, but we're again equating to the same level of satisfaction in 2009. In terms of benchmarking, that's detailed in uh, Table 1 on page uh, 27 of your papers to give us that comparison uh, across our own services and other local authorities and the respective highest and lowest uh, values attributed there. In terms of uh, 
recommendations. It is uh, recommended that Cabinet note the report and agree that we make use of the appended information in our tenant participation and engagement uh, services. And indeed, we have responded to some of these already, such as the housing officer uh, changes that have been made uh, relative to uh, some of the dissatisfaction responses sorry, that uh, we had received about service delivery. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, it's a really good report and, uh, and overall a pretty positive uh, picture. Happy to note the contents of the report and uh, recommend that we um, agree recommendation B. And just to add, uh, that's a very welcome recommendation. It's really, really good to see as many people participating and engaging as possible. Derek. Yeah, yeah, by and large, a good report. Um, but I, I just feel a couple of points, I think, just to, to draw out of it, is the, um, in Table 1, in page 27, it is just on the point about the, the satisfaction with the repair service. 79% um, satisfied, but that would leave about, you know, 21% not satisfied. You, you know, so, so that's about a fifth of our tenants, which I think we've got to, is worth looking at, and I know just from a, a local uh, councillor's point of view, we quite often get a lot of uh, complaints about the standard of the work and things, and having to go back and forward uh, on that, I think it's just a point to bring out. And the, um, the other one, which is a point I've raised quite often, is this, uh, keeping tenants informed. I feel that that's important um, and can save a lot of time and effort if just let them know if somebody's not going to turn up. then let them know, rather than them sitting at home all day waiting in some ton of bit. By and large, yeah, that's a good report, but I think they're important ones to note. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. And then we'll just move on now into um, Housing Allocations Policy Review. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. This is um, a paper which was considered previously at Cabinet on the 6th of October, which was in terms of the lettings outcomes for the uh, period 2013-14 uh, and outlined the, uh, what we'd achieved in terms of the allocation policy. This was subsequently accepted by Cabinet and referred to Performance Review and Scrutiny Committee. And in terms of their consideration of the report, they had uh, asked that uh, Cabinet consider, in terms of Section 3, that greater priority is given to applicants for housing within the general needs category who could establish a local connection uh, or those where needed to be relocated for increased family support within Midlothian and also to define the Council's policy on rehousing uh, those people who have been evicted or removed as a result of antisocial behaviour uh, and they would ask that Cabinet consider that uh, in terms of the allocation policy. Uh, that's in the context that we are, have been carrying out a consultation on the allocation policy, uh, because we do that biannually now, uh, following the 2013 allocation review. Um, but certainly, I'd maybe direct members to the fact that both of those elements are within the existing housing allocation policy. But of course, it's uh, for members to determine whether they want any increased priority uh, to those respective criteria. Uh, thank you very much. I had a, an inquiry. Did um, the PRS want different categories within um, local connection and therefore different waiting, or did they just want a general increase in local connection? Because just a general increase in the waiting would make no difference to people standing on the, the list. So I would appreciate a bit more explanation on that one, please. Thank you. Yes, th there is no distinction in terms of the category, as, as you've outlined, relative to employment or current residents uh, within Midlothian, because we, we ascribe 20 points to anybody in either of those categories, so it's equitable in that regard to what the local connection to Midlothian actually is. Uh, and certainly, personally, I have no difficulty if we're increasing the, the value of that priority, but as you've uh, inferred, that would mean if everybody who has 20 points would now then have, for example, 30 points. Um, so the position on the list wouldn't effectively change as a consequence of that. So without any variation, and there was no suggestion during the debate about variation within those criteria, um, so I, I can't give you any clearer uh, response on that particular point. Um, thank you very much. And, and the other one is, under the legis new legislation of the 2014 Act means that we're going to help antisocial behaviour 
antisocial behaving tenants quicker so we should have less difficulties uh, in the future? Yes, certainly. Within the Housing Scotland Act 2014, which came into effect last year, uh, there is provision in Section 20B for a, what's called the determination of minimum period for an application, which means if we have cause to exclude somebody from the waiting list, uh, that we're able to do that. And one of the cited circumstances is where a person has acted in an antisocial manner uh, or pursued a course of conduct amounting to harassment or acted in an antisocial manner. Now, this is a lower level uh, of, of um, antisocial behaviour criteria than is currently in practice. In the uh, current legislation, we have to take account of either a court order relative to either a decree or an antisocial behaviour order to have the same effect. The new Act uh, allows us to take that at a much lower level uh, of tolerance uh, and indeed that did feature in the consultation that's been carried out for the allocation policy because it was, it was question five uh, that was in the, the survey that we referenced earlier about whether uh, respondents think we should make use of these powers that I've just uh, uh, described. Uh, and we're currently undertaking the analysis of the responses to bring that back to Cabinet in due course. Um, so essentially, we, we, we have addressed that point. Um, we do it within the existing policy as far as the legislation allows, and the new legislation will give us a uh, greater latitude to apply that. But there's as yet no commencement order for that element of the Act. But as and when it comes in, we've tried to future-proof the allocation policy by asking that question of existing applicants and tenants. Thank you very much, Kelly. Uh, thanks very much, Kevin. Uh, I would just like to propose to uh, Cabinet colleagues that uh, given the reassurances given by Kevin and given that they're already uh, in the policy, uh, that we move no action on this paper. Uh, are, are my colleagues agreed with this? Thank you very much. And now we can move on to the next one, which is um, proposed abandonment of protected A701 realignment in adopted Midlothian local plan. Thanks, Chair. Um, from the 1990s onward, it's been recognised that the A701 at the Strait and Bilston end, its northern end, in other words, has needed to have some attention to relieve congestion. That's particularly at peak times. Um, planning permission was actually given in uh, the year 2000 for a route that is now shown on the, um, as protected in the current 2008 adopted Midlothian local plan. Um, the only part of that route which has actually been implemented is the Goutley Moss roundabout and the southern spur then down to the A7026 Ockendini Road. Um, there is no realistic prospect of this road on that alignment now ever being built for reasons which are set out in the report and which are also recognised in the emerging local development plan, proposed plan, as published uh, last, or earlier this year. Um, Indeed, as you know, the new plan proposes a new uh, realignment of the A701 well to the west of its existing alignment. Um, and this report is not about anything to do with that new proposal. This is to do with the route as shown in the 2008 local plan, which has, as I say, no realistic prospect of being built. Now, in normal course, as the new local plan supersedes the old local plan, the proposal would simply drop away and that would be the end of it. However, we do have on that protected line land adjacent to a long-established existing business who, who, who are keen to expand. I have met them, and they are uh, very clear about their in intended expansion plans. It's onto land which would uh, otherwise be part of the route. It's land, in fact, in the council's control as well. It's not private land. Um, and there seems to be every prospect that if, the, if we were not able to um, assist this company um, with um, an arrangement in terms of allowing them to expand, obviously in terms of commercial rates for, for if land were to be sold, um, then there's a risk that we could uh, stifle the opportunity for that company to expand, possibly even to see it relocate out of Midlothian, which would be a great shame after it's been here for so many years. So, on that basis, rather than allowing that situation to happen, uh, given that the road realistically will never be built on that alignment, uh, the recommendation is, Chair, that um, the Council formally um, uh, abandons that route. 
um, and the, re the recommendations are such that um, it's seeking approval here of Cabinet to do that, but because it would be a change to the adopted statutory Midlothian local plan, then in my view it would be sensible and appropriate to remit this on to Council if you're, if you're happy to do so and ask Council to formally approve that change to the local plan. Thank you very much. Jamie? Thanks, Ian. Yes, I have no hesitation in uh, recommending we accept this. It will help this business, and um, I'm happy to, to accept the recommendations. Thank you. Derek, did you want to have anything? Uh, no, I just all second it, and I'm pretty sure the residents in Bilson would, so I'll probably be quite happy <laughs> that decision. Thank you very much. And then we can move on to the next item, uh, submission to the Scottish Government compliance with climate change duties. Sorry, to call us to, I'll start again for the purpose of the recording. This report is uh, to inform Cabinet of the Council's statement of compliance with climate change duties for the year 2014-15 and to recommend its submission to Scottish Government by the due date at the end of the month. Um, just to, to perhaps give it a background, the Climate Change Scotland Act 2009 provides an opportunity or the requirement for formal reporting by public bodies, that includes councils, on their performance in tackling climate change, if I can summarise it in those few words, um, and that's to be on an annual basis. Now, this council, along with many others, has been voluntarily submitting reports through COSLA to Scottish Government for a number of years. Um, the Minister, uh, earlier this year, decided that on the basis of perhaps some, some patchy results across the country in terms of uh, trying to address climate change targets, <clears throat> he's required now that <clears throat> the formal reporting uh, elements of the Act be coming into force. So they would come into force so that all public bodies, including councils, would need to report on their uh, work and performance to uh, tackle climate change for the year 2015-16, in other words, this current year, and they would have to put the reports in by this time next year. To try and uh, assess the uh, appropriateness and eff effectiveness of the template the Scottish Government has prepared, um, what they're asking for is for councils and others to submit information this year by the end of this month on their performance in 2014-15. Um, so that's a voluntary arrangement, but we're happy to, 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 to do that to assist Scottish Government on, on that matter. Um, the headlines on the performance of the council in 2014-15 are set out in paragraph 27 of the report. And a copy of the report itself, as proposed, is attached to the report, which is the, the, the Scottish Government's template. Um, what I would say is that the headlines are, are, are reasonably good in as much as they show a, a, a fair bit of good news, but <clears throat> there's always room for improvement. Um, also indicated in the report is that I think probably there's, there's a general acceptance that um, the Council in overall terms, could probably uh, be more focused on some particular aspects of climate change in terms of addressing it. In some areas have been very good, maybe in others it's been, maybe not been so good. Um, there are changes which are currently being taking place within the planning service um, which will aim to provide a much better focus on issues of climate change. And although for 15, 16 results that probably won't show up particularly well, I think for the, for, the, for the ensuing years it will and the aim is therefore to, to move forward into a, a much more focused approach on climate change. That's not to deny the progress that's been made which is good in many areas but I think probably if we're looking for areas for improvement this is one of the ones where there's an opportunity to do so. Thank you very much and my colleagues wish to make a question or statement. Kelly? Um, I just wanted to make the point that I think it's uh, really positive that uh, we've been uh, submitting these reports voluntarily and uh, have been doing so for quite some time. I think even when that changes, I think we should always um, aspire to uh, not just adhere to our statutory arrangements on climate change, but to, to aim to uh, go higher. So I think that's really positive. Bob? 
Well, I think, well, obviously, if Ian says we can do better in some things, so we can. But I think we've done very well. We were the, I just recall that we were the first council, I think, in Scotland to make the province go about an electric car. Right. <laughs> so happy to move the recommendation. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to say the corporate emissions associated with staff commuting um, have risen a bit, and I wondered if there was anything more we could do to encourage people to um, use more public transport and less single car usage to work. Well, I know um, colleagues in the, um, uh, in the Resources Directorate um, have been addressing this. For some years ago, there was um, a council travel plan which was prepared, um, and some progress was made on that, but, but maybe it, 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 I think there's a general acceptance that um, things have moved on from then. Uh, certainly, it's on the agenda for, for, for colleagues in the Resources Directorate with whom I've been in contact, and you're quite right, Leader, to, to, to pick out a particular issue there, which is probably standing out as an item which is not going in the right direction. But that's something which is in hand. Thank you very much. So we're all happy to approve. Thank you very much. And once again, thank you very much for coming along today and have a good day.